Um, first, I guess I live up in the hills. Um, myself and my partner, uh, Sue Starkin, uh, have a studio up there in an old orchard, which is pretty idyllic. Lots of green grass and waving trees. Um, but wherever I go, um, I go through a, an industrial area, a light industrial area or a heavy industrial area. Um, but they're not really places that make things. They're places that deal mostly with found objects. Um, they either repair things or they put things together um, in flat packs. The real kind of um, great, um, much vaunted movie star industry of this state is, um, is mining, digging holes. So in actual fact, it's a reductive industry. We actually take things away. We don't actually build things. And the city itself almost is a kind of a, a metaphor for that, that if anything um, seems to be older than, than 20 or 30 years, it gets knocked down and some uh, facsimile of an overseas number is actually thrown up in its place. Um, there is a risk then too that the art, um, our culture, uh, our visual art um, component of it, can be regarded as a similar thing. Um, it's actually quite dispensable and not of a terribly kind of high, high and enduring value. Um, and people have sort of said about um, uh, how we do do things overseas and interstate and whatever. Um, but that, again, is almost like a, a version of, of expo exporting our rocks in a strange kind of way. Um, I've always been really quite surprised by um, people that are uh, artists here that, that, that do um, actively deny the place. When I was at art school, I was sort of found it really quite curious that people um, who lived in Darlington um, did anything um, to avoid painting or making art about Darlington. Um, they were actually more interested in Cornwall or Greenwich Village, um, places some of them may have been but hadn't lived for a while. Um, and probably the the, um, the most difficult thing for me at the moment um, is that kind of lack of, of, a, of a faith, of a depth um, in our own practice. <coughs> Pardon me. I guess another a aspect of it which has kind of impacted on a lot of the uh, uh, infrastructure of, of Perth is things like um, the um, comparative bonanza of public art where a lot of people um, will actually commit to a public art practice which is a guaranteed income. Um, it's a fairly kind of straightforward down the line uh, contract. Why in comparison would you waste two years anguishing in a studio producing a body of work, um, showing it, sell three pieces, take the rest home uh, and continue with your real job where you can actually uh, make some money. Um, and the other aspect of course we, we have a fairly generous um, funding for artists but um, it's like so arcane have the um, accountancy processes become that um, you almost need a, a separate degree in, uh, in clerical studies to kind of get there. And consequently, I mean, I've sat on, on numbers of boards and I've often found it quite curious that practically the same submissions arrive with different, under different headings with the same documentation. And at first I thought, well, it's a bit kind of dodgy. But then I thought, well, if you had to fill out all those applications all the time, it would be a full-time job, so why wouldn't you re-flag them? Um, I guess the, the, the downside of those is I mean, a lot of the publicly funded um, practices tend to be um, shown in, in public spaces where possible, and a lot of them are residencies, so the artwork actually goes overseas. The other thing about the, um, the public uh, artwork, the big artworks, the commissioned works, is that they're very slow release. Um, I, I curated a show several years ago um, in concert with Sandy Murray called uh, Maquette Fossils because it was, on, at that stage, I was pretty interested in public art um, and you would construct very well, heart, very heartfelt maquettes and, and do a lot of writing and sit them to a board. Uh, five people would see them, four of whom really hated art and were there because they had to and you'd take it home again. So you had these beautifully constructed maquettes. Um, every artist had like uh, shelves full of them and no one ever saw them. So I curated a show, uh, which was called that um, uh, Maquette Fossils, which was shown down in, um, in Mandurah as part of the public art uh, symposium down there. And it proved to be very popular. It was a great one to put together. But again, um, unless you went to that symposium, you'd, you wouldn't have seen that art either. Um, 
I guess um, another thing which really troubled me when I was a, a, a kid too was um, the idea of uh, the art forgery as opposed to the art appropriation. Um, I, I did find it kind of strange that if you had an artwork which was valued at tens of millions of dollars um, and then someone who knew about these things ran a spectrograph over it and found that's not right, it's worse than worthless. How does that work? The artwork effectively hasn't really changed. Only one percentage of it or one bit of it has. Um, I did find that really, really interesting. But then, of course, it's not about the art. Um, you, you can't stand in front of a Picasso and say, I can't see 500 Commodore V8 Utes in an exchange. It doesn't work that way. You're actually really talking about um, the experience, the background. You're talking about that person's, the artist's um, feelings, their observations, all set in the context of the grinding tectonic plates of the culture around them. That's what the artwork's about. So when it actually proves to be a fake art, that trust, that kind of sense of insight has actually been trashed. So it becomes almost a cultural blasphemy um, to discover that, um, that invalid artwork. On the other hand, um, I guess there's a whole thing about, uh, and I did hear it say, say <coughs> pardon me, hear it said the other day, that good art will always rise. And I know a lot of artists, myself included, that had that kind of idea that um, if you actually make the best art you can, sooner or later through some convection it'll make the spangled surface of the cultural lake um, of its own accord or by almost a natural order. Um, and I think that kind of is a, a bit of a meritocracy kind of argument which kind of really works well if you're not a, not a working artist. But if you are a working artist, <coughs> pardon me, it becomes abundantly clear that the meritocracy might be a great idea, but, you know, in all fairness, if you're an abused kid from Ecotara, you don't have the same chance of being Premier as you do if you're actually a pampered kid from Wembley Downs. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Other, I guess, that aspect is, is courtship. The social animals, you can't really deny it. We actually really like crowds. Um, exhibit A. Um, <laughs> though we don't necessarily like it, but we actually do tend to be drawn to it by some sort of strange kind of cultural gravity. Um, I, uh, well, I just had emerged from uh, uni and uh, I was prepping to take some stuff over to, um, to Melbourne, um, trucking it over in my um, little third-hand van. Um, there was a guy who was, uh, had just arrived here recently and he asked me if, he, if I could take some stuff for him. And I agreed in principle. And so I think he gave me about, um, about 150 kilograms of cast iron to take uh, for him, which was uh, very thoughtful of him. And when we were in Melbourne, we unloaded and we put work together and we had a really in discussion, very likeable fella. And, uh, and he said, looked at me and he said, oh, so what do you want to do? Where do you want to go with, with what you do? And I honestly said, looked at him and I said, look, I just want to make the best art that I can. And um, he kind of turned on his heel and he walked away. And I uh, just thought, yeah, yeah, it's a bit kind of a bit rough, a bit dismissive. Um, and over the months uh, thereafter, I, um, we were at the same meetings, same gatherings and whatever, and he would often ask me, who, who was the best person in the room to work? And uh, so you'd, you'd indicate, and, and he would. And uh, in due course, he finished up um, having a professorship at a fairly prestigious um, uh, national university and having people make some fabulous work on his behalf. And I did get it. I, you know, if you really want to get places, you've got to do the schmoozing, um, depending on the places that you want to get to. I'm not sure that in the end if you, it's really going to help your art practice in a direct kind of manner. Of course, acceptance is terribly important. If, if people don't think you're any good, um, they won't show your work. Or if they do, you take it home again. And sooner or later, speaking from experience, um, two or three cetanus is not enough to put the stuff that, um, <laughs> that you thought was fabulous but no one else did particularly, or the right people didn't think was fabulous. Um, 
And I guess, too, the thing about the career trajectory, which um, uh, is often used in, in common parlance, um, there is, a, I guess, an issue with that, that a lot of people that really are very, very keen about the career tra trajectory look very much at art making as a bit of an inconvenience. And the, the quicker you can do it, um, the more painless, the more you can outsource it, um, the kind of better when you get on and, and do the real stuff. Um, and I, I guess that works for them. There's a, administration, I guess you need them because things don't work without it. But at the same time too, the way that art is not monolithic, it's actually very, very kind of heterogeneous. Um, our, our pathways and our practices uh, are according. And I think when we get to a point where we start to think, yeah, this is, this is the way to do it, this is the one way to do it, it's a straight transaction. And some of the downsides of actually calling it an art industry is precisely that. There's this kind of notion that it's about um, merely fabrication and marketing and, and retailing. And an extent of it is, but a lot of it's not. A lot of it is about um, basically pointless R&D quite often. A lot of it's about kind of having fun. A lot of it's about, Jesus, therapy, can I say the word? But a lot of it is actually about trying to understand the world through your work, not about kind of making ornaments um, for other people. Pardon me. I guess um, second last thing is um, shocks of the new. Um, I always liked Robert Hughes. Um, in the past, things were pretty straightforward. I, a lot of people my age um, look kind of fondly at the 80s and the 90s, particularly in this part of the country, for because for about I don't know best part of a decade. It was okay to be an artist in Western Australia. People kind of like thought it was a good idea to make things um, and make objects. Uh, and that kind of like um, an era that went, went past really very, very quickly um, before we even knew it. But in that, that high summer, um, it was actually great to be uh, around here. There were lots of arts collectives, lots of people doing interesting stuff. Um, odd Fellows, the, the, the Maltings, the, the Fields Cafe, lots of stuff going on. Um, no internet, of course. Um, television was Dynasty and Water Rats and the occasional ABC um, docudrama. Music was a pub gigs, AMF and radio cassettes. Musicians made money through gigs, royalties and record sales. But there were also five newspapers printed um, a week. And most of them had art coverage. And quite often you could get three people covering the same uh, arts event, um, either vehemently disagreeing with one another or um, agreeing with one, other, one another from diametrically opposed um, criteria. And it was kind of interesting to, to read that. And I, I had totally forgot about that until I did a residency in, in Scotland um, several years ago. And I just used to pore over the weekend press uh, in Edinburgh because there was just such a lot of discussion and, and very, very eloquent discussion about why this artwork was good, why that artwork was bad, the backstories behind it. It actually treated it like it was a genuine journalistic issue, um, not just an inventory um, and not just an advertorial um, for the, the university of your choice. Um, things have changed. You can't go back, um, as the other um, speakers have said. Um, we, we are in a different... Uh, era now, um, in a strange kind of way that uh, if there ever was such a thing as the artist being a hero, um, kind of long gone, well the art basically changed the Guernsey, so I think that your independent musical um, mus uh, musician is the hero these days um, for telling the truth man. Um, the artists themselves do tend to kind of like um, be a lot more institutionalised, um, there's a whole lot more um, uh, I suppose sectarianism. Um, where are they? <laughs> okay. um, so we've had to adjust. Uh, artists have to adjust. I guess the fundamental thing is it's how you do business, which is uh, which is the issue. Um, but the fundamental business that you do, I don't think it changes that much. People still really like art, and people still really, really like making art. Now, I guess you know the ways forward. I, I like the idea that that. Um, 
there are, you know, the, the downside is that we've lost several galleries, art schools are under stress, universities have, have really lowered their standards, entry standards so much in pursuit of the dollar that non-degree courses are either closed or, or closing. Um, <clears throat> but on the other hand too, um, there are um, um, people doing stuff. I look at, um, with great encouragement, at, at Ron Nister's space, uh, Mike Breen does his backyard kind of forums. Um, uh, I've been involved either curatorially or, or just participating in, in several events recently which are really interesting kind of cross um, uh, discipline exhibitions with people you wouldn't, wouldn't really have even exhibited with um, uh, five years ago. But <coughs> now there is a certain kind of sense of like, well, are barriers of any, of any help to anybody? I think probably one of the biggest issues is a, is a real kind of lack of, of leadership and a central um, kind of sense of, of belonging and worth. <coughs> I just want to finish um, by saying I'm just reminded of um, when I went to North America um, in the 80s. You're supposed to go to England because all real artists go to England. But I've met a Californian fellow here who was really interesting and he said, come over sometime and I'll, I'll show you some stuff. So I went there, and um, it was, to me, really, um, literally life-changing. One of the places I went was the, um, the uh, Museum of San Francisco, and um, they had um, the New York art in there. Uh, and I thought that was really kind of strange. You know, trace of California art. And I asked around, and there was a guy that made hot rods, and he said, oh, you should, there's a University of, of um, a Museum of California. Uh, in San Jose, come and have a look. And I did, and it was full of Californian art. Um, interesting art, talked, talked about the lived experience of, of being a Californian. Um, about a month later, I went up to Canada, visited a friend up in, in BC, and visited the museum up there, the, um, the um, museum, art museum of, of um, British Columbia, which is in Vancouver, and it was full of Canadian art. Really interesting stuff. If I hadn't have seen the Shad Bolts and the Smiths um, and um, the Colvilles in that place, I wouldn't have seen them. If we, anybody comes to this part of the country, where do they see West Australian art? Where do they get the kind of the stories? There are lots of good bits of art around. They're in private collections, they're in university collections. But in terms of, if you want to have a look at what people have done, got a kind of sense of the place, there just isn't a place um, to do it. Um, there's not a lot of writing about um, what goes on here. Um, there's you know, some coffee table books and things like that. But again, the reference has been made, uh, and will probably be made again, that uh, national um, documentation doesn't really consider West Australia. And from my own experience, if you get invited to a, uh, a national show, <laughs> it's because they want federal funding, not because they want <laughs> West Australian artists in there. Um, and that kind of ex that expedience in the end, I think, actually underpins it all. Look, it's a great, a really great place to work. I can't really win. I, you know, I have a beautiful studio. I'm making the art that I kind of want. Um, um, living with someone I'm crazy about, um, and I've put 40 years into the place, and the place has been pretty good back to me. Um, but we can do better. We can do a whole lot better than we are. And part of that is actually about, about self-belief, about the fact that, well, yeah, we do good work, we do important work, and we do very diverse work. We don't have to be journeyman and apologetic, or even worse, invisible. Thank you.